Anthony? Mm-hmm. Have you seen my cape? I just got it back from the dry cleaners, and I don't know what I do with it. No, I haven't seen your cape. Oh, uh, because somebody recommended that I take it to this new dry cleaning place where a lot of people go, and... Oh, here it is. Oh, those sons of bitches. They get a big What happened? Hole. It's a big hole in it. What? I know. Will, where do you take your cape? Nowhere. I don't have a cape. Oh, you're one of those people. What about yes. you? Well, see, I, I don't take my cape in to get clean. I just let it hang from my shoulders. So it's got all uh, nasty stuff on it. It's been uh, dragged through the ground and through the puddles and through the muck. Well, it's flavor. I'll never flavor. take for I'll know better next time and take my cape there. So as far as you listeners, you better hang on to your capes because you just joined Super Geeks. All right, that was the worst opening ever, and I love it. What are you talking about? That was a good opening. Hey, look, it was so bad just was because good. I don't take my cape to some cleaners that on the corner, right, owned by uh, a minority group. I would have thought people who own capes are the minority group. That's what I was. Thinking. I mean, who the hell? Are the, who owns a cape? I'm Cape Man. Yeah, they cape probably man. trip over it a lot. Trying to run around. Cape man. Though they say capes might help with aerodynamics for flying characters. No, it actually helps with a uh, uh, flak. You know, with debris that's flying through the air. Oh, yeah, that may injure, injure you. And a cape captures it, right? And it stops it from hurting you. And it also likes to get caught in those big grindy machines where it mm-hmm. pulls you into it, right? Mm-hmm. Or it gets caught in the toilet and it pulls you down. Or it gets caught in the uh, the tree and it catches on something. They're always catching on things. I know. Okay. How many movies have the bad guys grabbed the f- cape character by the cape, swung him around? Three. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he counted. He's counted. Yeah, three. All right. Well, I'm... I'm George Chooch 99A is my Twitter. I had to make my own version. And uh, Anthony, where can people find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Battles. And well, on Twitter at Intrinsicus. That's intrinsic with a U.S. on the end. All right. Well, we're short a couple of our normal hosts today, but then again, they sometimes just pop up. Uh, so maybe they will this time. All right. First subject on the agenda today is. Um, Punisher was announced to get his own series on Netflix, which actually surprised me, not because it was eventually going to happen, but because of how soon Netflix announced it. Uh, what do you guys think? I'm not surprised at all, considering how popular and how well-received John Bernthal's depiction of Punisher. He, Everybody says he nailed it. They're like, we gotta nail, we got to get this guy into the fold, bring him in, let's make a Punisher series. Even though it wasn't on their slate, he's probably not going to be part of the Defender series. They, they no, have to won't. do it. I think it's just a, a logical next step to extending the, the Marvel Universe into the TV, and it's just going to be fantastic. Yeah, exactly. John Bernthal didn't do well against zombies, but he did better against bad guys who deserve it. And beating you up know, as, Daredevil. Yeah, just and beating up Daredevil, Daredevil he right? He totally ass. kicked his butt. I never saw right? someone walking yeah. back because I don't really I mean, like that show. But. Is it a win-win where you beat up a blind guy? <laughs> Um, well, according to John Bernthal, it is because now he has his own series with the Punisher, and it's going to be bad as yes, it's going to be R-rated. It's going to be blood guts. It's just going to be. I think if they do it right, and I think they did with the way they depicted right. it in, in just the fourth. Well, know, he's always those... had his own comics in in the comics, so right? But, but I mean, there's the always the material. They portrayed it in the series in Daredevil, the first four episodes, and then throughout it was perfect. He played it exactly like he should be. He's unforgiving. Unfor- he's not. He's not. He's not crazy. He knows what he's doing. He's in his right mind, and he just wants to kill people. <laughs> 
Just, right. Well, well, he, well, he, he only wants guys. to kill those kiss that are deserving guys. of it. It's kill not like he guys. just wants to. Yeah. If you are a bad guy and deserve it, you will yes. die. Right. He comes for you. Die, 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 die. In the comics, this is what this is why it lends itself to be its own series because he wasn't always. He was started off like in, in this. He started off as a guest star and as an anti-hero in Spider-Man, Daredevil, and uh, comics like that. And then he became popular enough to get his own comics. He got his own movies before all this. Dolph Lundgren played him. I can't remember the other guy that played him in the second one, but um, you know, he, he's always been a popular let's not, character. Let's not mention the Dolph Lundgren one because that was not a very good movie. <laughs> I don't remember if it was a good movie or not. It was. It was a long time ago. But um, he's always been. They've always been able to make him stay interesting and in, you know in his own ser- title. So the problem the when comics, you, the problem when you you cast somebody from another nation who doesn't speak. English with a, an American or an English accent or can't do the accent like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Dolph Lundgren. They have they can speak English fantastically, but they can't do the accent. Punisher yeah. is an American character. So the person that you hire to do that character has to have that kind of accent. Spider-Man, Batman. You can't hire somebody with a Swedish accent or the Swedish Well, English actually, accent. Tom Holland's from England. And he's well, yeah, but he American. does an American accent. Yeah. That's the, I, I don't have a problem if you are a foreign actor. If you can do the accent right, if you have an American. I mean, you have a lot of American actors who do British accents, who star in British TV or British movies. Yeah, That's actually, it was the opposite if, with um. If you with can Buffy. do the accent to... Um, the, the classic is Robin Hood with the... What was his name? Uh, Kevin, Kevin Costner. Costner. Ho- awful. Why was he doing that movie when he can't do the English accent? Oh, I like the movie, I, but yeah, he should have said it. It was awful. <laughs> yeah, was he could have been English. Because he couldn't do the accent. So you've got to be able to do the accent that portrays it for the character. I don't care who you were or where you're from. It's ir- irrelevant. If you're the actor and you can do that character and that accent correctly, then great. If you can't, you shouldn't be in the role. Well, my thing is this. You could bring up, you know, Dolph Lundgren, Thomas Jane, or other actors that were in The Punisher. Are you just holding on to old stuff, or are you really a geek? You know, a true geek will just say, hey, look, I like John Bernthal, and let's just go with that as Punisher, and let's not reflect on Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, and Angelina Jolie, by the way, didn't really do an English accent for her Lara Croft. Um kind of a little bit in one scene but for the most part she just talked like herself and the character was meant was supposed to be english but nobody cared because she did such a good how job how are we talking about angelina jolie when we're, we're talking, talking about, about the punisher uh, how are, just, no but we're talking about the punisher no i know it was just a side but there's thing. so many actors that were in the punisher right three i know of yeah yeah you have dolph lundgren right yeah, I don't you know have Ray I Stevenson, who is in Punisher Warzone, oh. and then you have Thomas Jane, who was the Punisher, right? So you have several actors that you could talk about, but you talk about Angelina Jolie. I, I, I didn't, just, but I mean... I was, the, I was making a side note about the actors who f- didn't stick to the well, character's accent. he brought accent. up Dolph Lundgren, and I'm like, no, we don't want to talk about Dolph Lundgren. Right, and I totally agree. Let's not bring it up. Let's not bring up old stuff. Let's talk about the new stuff right. with John Bernthal. Well, we can't really because and I've how excited him. we are we because are. We are definitely excited. this guy totally won a new series with his acting. Yes, I think he did it. He he did such a great job, and people were so taken with his take of the of the character that right. Netflix like, well, we've got to do a series now. So they signed him up. They're getting the uh, crew together and they're going to make a Punisher series. Because it was not on their schedule. It was not on their list, right? Did they it say not... when it's coming out? I no, forget. they don't know yet. I mean, it's got, they're still doing, they've got Luke Cage this fall. They've got um, uh, Iron Fist next next year sometime. Then they're going to do the Defender series. He may be a portion of, you know, part of somewhere into the Defender before it leads up to his solo series, you know? Yeah, I mean, they do just Jessica Jones season two, but they didn't say when yet, but yeah. Probably next fall, I would think. Um. Yeah, I don't unless think... unless they like I said, I don't know when they're doing uh, Iron Fist. I think they've done some Iron Fist. They start filming Iron Fist, so I'm thinking that's going to be in the spring. We'll do Jessica Jones in the fall, and then the Defender series m- mashup between Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, uh, Daredevil, and Iron Fist will be two years from the spring today. This and year, hopefully Moon Knight. Yeah, but they... see, Daredevil will be a spinoff. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Punisher. The Punisher will be a spinoff of Daredevil. Yeah, because that's where he was introduced. Yeah. And Luke Cage is a spinoff right, of Jessica Jones. Right, but I mean, Jones. the thing with this is, he can interchange between all of these shows because they're all in New York, pretty much. Right, right, exactly. I mean, they've already Hell's introduced Kitchen, Luke Cage right? into Jessica Jones. I'm sure they're going to have Iron Fist and Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. I'm sure they're going to bring in Daredevil at some point once they get the De- Defender thing. They're all going to be interchanging. So it would yeah. be great to see Luke Cage and Punisher face off or Iron Fist and Punisher or well, Jessica well, Jones. I mean, this is the thing. We want to see these characters interact. That's why people like these superhero mashups. The Avengers, the uh, you know Batman, Superman, the 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 Civil War that I'm going to see next week. Uh, it's going to be it's fantastic. People want to see these characters interact with each other. Yep, yep. It's going to be awesome. Um, and it's, since you segued into it, um, I'm, I'm don't worry. I like I promise I'm not going to give any spoilers. Of course, uh, as I've t- told some people, I managed to see an early viewing of Civil War. Um, I won't say exactly how that happened, but let's just say it happened. And um, <laughs> but I will say that the hype is worth it. It is the best, in my opinion, superhero movie ever, which a lot of Universal pe- people are saying are agreeing with that, even better than the Avengers. Um, some people think it's right on this, right a tiny notch below Winter Soldier, but most people seem to agree that it's unbelievably awesome and it is worth the hype. It's the opposite of the way Batman v Superman worked out, where the hype ended up being the the opposite, but you know, by the time the critics came involved, but um, yeah, this movie is incredible. You're gonna really enjoy it. And um, enough, enough, enough. Let's that's all. Can you just get to the movie? Oh my god, this lead in is killing me. I know. But that's all I was gonna say. Is you guys are gonna love it. It's awesome. Um, it's and uh, have you guys? Uh, I was gonna bring this up last week. Um, only because he's in this movie. Um, I just recently saw Ant Man for the first time. Did you guys both see that? I've seen Ant Man. Yes, absolutely loved it. It was hilarious. You yeah, I mean, it's it's a good movie. It's it's the th- that's, that's what I'm liking about. Me- I mean, they've done different. They've done period pieces. They've done action series. They've done a comedy. I mean, they're 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 not afraid to take a risk and to say, look, this is what the character is. He's silly. He's a guy who shrinks. I mean, come on. I mean, how, how stupid do you have to be? They don't take in their superheroes as critically as serious as they because sh- they're superheroes. Nobody, we don't have superheroes in reality, but we like watching superheroes do their stuff. And so, yeah, what, it's Philly. What I like about them too is the way they do them in the movies. Is they, they, it's like we talked about with Doctor Strange how much they're going to get into the supernatural stuff or explain it in some way, like Thor does. You know, to kind of compare super science. Um, just the way they they make the world react to the heroes around them is well, they're completely different with how they do it in in the DC cinematic universe and the Marvel universe. And in the Marvel universe, it's like. They save the world and people want them around. And then in the DC universe, he saves the world, but people still don't want him around, <laughs> including Batman. So, you know, they, they have two completely different ways of doing their universes. And, you know, and that leads into one of the topics I dropped earlier about um, Zack Snyder. Yeah. He's not doing so good, is he? <laughs> he's not very... He's having some problems with the with the WB and about... about what he has planned for Justice League, and, uh, and well, I'll let you guys start first, and then I'll follow with what I think. What do you think, Magnum? About what? Zach, He's not uh, even listening. About- I don't even care about Zack Snyder. Why wow. are you even asking me about him? I don't like him. I don't like his movies. I don't like his ability to direct. Can't so, argue. you know, uh, I like if that you, wanna, you, if you want my opinion on something, let's talk about something a little more interesting than Zack Snyder. <laughs> well, what do you think, Will? Well, according to this um, article... Well, let me, let me, um, let me rephrase just, the question. Let me rephrase just, the question. Why don't you just, why don't you hey, just Will, let's, what do you think? Wait, let me interrupt you, Will. No, <laughs> hold on. Because I, wa- I <laughs> wanted to make the question more open than just that. I, what do you think of the future of the DC Universe with... With Zack Snyder still being involved, I don't think there is a future. There, with Zack there Snyder. is no future with the, the Zack Snyder with, the thing, involved. No, the thing with Zack Snyder is, and this is what, like I say, I haven't seen his director's cut. He made with Batman, like I've mentioned, a four-hour movie. He, right. He filmed and he put together a four-hour movie. Then he had to cut it back to two and a half hours. So there's an hour and a half on the cutting room floor. Uh, to me, I want to see this four-hour movie. 
then I will judge his directing capabilities. Yeah, but the hour and a half get, the movie the, is Batman reliving the death of his parents. Maybe. I don't know. We mommy, don't know what's on the daddy, mommy, we don't know daddy, what's on the oh, you floor. died. I am now going to be a vengeful you child. That. You don't know that. It sounds like every freaking Asian movie that's out there. <laughs> but, but, but again, so, but the, like I say, he, he this is what he released. He released that two hour, two and a half hour movie. And it was okay movie. I mean, it was a, it was an entertaining movie, but it does no way just okay. Meet, yeah, but it does not meet up to. It's well below Marvel. It just yeah. is. And the thing is, like we've said before, they've given Zack Snyder carte blanche to do whatever they like with his their their property. I am so pensive because my parents have died, and who is this Superman who thinks he's a god amongst men? I will bring him down because I should be the only hero out here. I'm Batman. Actually, it, it was about he lost more than his parents by this point in his life. He lost Robin. He lost no, 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 no. Batman would oh he never got over the death of his parents. That was only and part you know of that. that no, 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 no. Come on, George, stop being a fanboy. I'm not, and admit that Batman has never gotten over the death of his parents. He hasn't, but that's I'm just saying that's not the only part in the movie. He's, he has issues. He, he's he got he's therapy. lost the whole point is he lost he tons needs of therapy. people. Well, that's that. Yeah, that's definitely the case. He definitely needs therapy. Yeah. But everybody in a superhero needs therapy. I'm sorry if you you're dressing up in tights. The Punisher doesn't need therapy. And wearing your underwear on the, underwear the outside, on outside, you definitely need. <laughs> right. You, you need your therapy. On the outside of your pants, you need to go to a psychiatrist. You are this. You're this. Yeah. Delusional. If you're going around beating up people, you know, thinking that you are the police or you're going to be this vigilante, then you need to seek help. Daredevil. Jessica Jones, Luke, they all need help. Even in the Marvel Universe, these people are psychologically damaged. Can we say that uh, that Batman needs help for beating up a guy that wears makeup? Hence Joker. (laughs) Just because the Joker wants to portray himself as a clown, Batman should not go around beating him up. Yeah, I don't know about that one. (laughs) I'm just saying. He, well, he does I, no, a lot look, of bad things, so not just... Let, let's get back to Z- Zack Snyder, okay? Yeah. He, I mean, he's made some good movies. I will make, he made the 300, right? Didn't he do 300? Yeah, that was one of the few he did. That was the right. only good movie he made, though. I, t- I liked... The, what, what did he do with that, um, the one with the superheroes, the... Uh, the, uh, uh, the Watchmen. Watchmen. I liked that movie. I, I liked it, too. I mean, it was a it was a good movie. It, it told a story. It flowed. They had, you know, I liked that movie. The only I, people I who hated Watchmen were the fans. Like, of the I, like I said, I'm not a watch. I didn't. I never read the the, the novel. I yeah. never read the, the graphic novels. So I came into that movie fresh. I didn't have any opinions about it. I liked the movie. I liked 300. You know, I wanted to like Superman. Um, the, you know, his super, uh, Man of uh, Steel. Man of Steel, yeah. And the thing, I, 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 I just watched this, right? I just watched the Man of Steel again. It was on TV, and I watched the opening. The thing is, the beginning of that movie, where Superman is on that fishing boat, after, after the, uh, the stuff on Krypton, and we see Superman for the first time, he's on that fishing boat, and he's heading out, and all of a sudden they've got an emergency call out to this oil rig. And he goes on there, and he saves those people on the oil rig. He comes out, he's burning, he rips that door off, he gets them to the flight deck, that tower's about to fall on them, he jumps out of the helicopter, he holds that thing while the helicopter flies away. That's Superman! Yeah. That was it, right? He had the, he had the classic Superman right there. And then from then on, that Superman went downhill. He was moody. He was going on towards the North Pole to find his. Yeah, what was he moody about? I, I mean, I, he just saved a bunch of people on an oil platform, right? right? But the thing, and I, now I, he's all pensive and stuff. Wasn't that after his dad died that he started? No, that but I mean, it, it, this, this is years after his dad died. Oh, that's right? right. So he's wandering the world trying to find himself. He just saved. Oh yeah, Kevin Costner died. So I would be, uh, I would be angry too if Kevin Costner right. died. But the thing is, he had Superman at that point. That was Superman. That was the classic Superman. Why he made them into this brooding character that he appears and then he gets into a fight with these Kryptonians. Okay, right. when he surrenders himself to the Kryptonians, that's Superman too. He gave himself up rather than being letting them kill the, kill the population. Again, he had that portion right there. But then he lets the Kryptonians destroy New York and wherever on the other side of the world with India. And like, I mean, they're just 
what not New York, the Gotham, Me- whatever it is. Oh, Metropolis, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I want to have to correct you. He actually gave himself up for a redhead, skinny girl who couldn't cook. So, um, <laughs> no, yeah, he gave him he gave himself Lane. up because no, Lois was not, Lane was not taken at that point. He gave himself up for the human race because they said, "Look, we want Superman." Yeah, that's then true. It was Lois Lane. Lane Trust me. Wait. Watch, rewatch the movie. It I was did. Lois I just Lane. It. It had nothing to do with the human race. It was some stupid redhead who no. had no cooking ability and was skinny. <laughs> no, it wasn't because of Lois. It wasn't due to Lois. I mean, he liked her, obviously. In fact, before he took off to go to them, he told the general to let Lois go because they, they had Lois in, like, custody or whatever. Right. So, you know, he's... Um, but the thing is, he had Superman right a couple of times in that movie. Then at the end, after Metropolis has been destroyed, he breaks the uh, Nods, uh, Zods, whatever his name is, neck. It's odd. He's, oh, he's screaming his head off. Well, he he's screaming somebody. because he doesn't want to kill, but he finally had to make the decision to kill this guy, and, and that's like, what what pained him. So he, when he broke the neck, Superman he screamed. Wouldn't Superman in the comics have found another way? He no, did. not when he was no, a noob. He not was in this noob. situation. Because he knew Zod was trying to kill that family, remember? It was the husband, the wife, and the kids, and Zod was going to kill him, and Superman was like, oh, crap. It was do I kill Zod Superman. or do I save the family? And he's like, I'm going to have to kill Zod because Zod will kill the family. That, not only that, but he didn't have any experience to make decisions that quick. He had, it was his first time out. Where do you get that from, George? Because he had just put on the suit, started learning to fly when all that nah, I don't think so. I think you're making that up. It's Superman had to make a constant choice. I Do I save the family or do I let Z- right, what I'm Zod saying is he live? Didn't have the experience but if he let him- Zod live, he would have killed the family. What I'm trying to say is, and this is what Zack Snyder said, is that... Who cares about Zack Snyder? We well, already said it. he sucks. But it's his well, movie. It. It's his he, movie. It's his movie, so whatever he I says... I don't care it, about Zack that, Snyder. Yeah, but you've got to... He, he's I don't, the get, director, I don't his recognize his, his authority well, in Superman. Do his, you have to I don't do recognize his authority in Superman. Movie, you have to. It's his movie. No! Superman had a choice. Kill Zod or save the family. Which would you choose right, and why? Done, we all, yes. We've already said that. But the thing George was saying was Superman is new at the game. He he's like, not new. He's yes, not new at this. Yes, he's he, been yes, on he How no. long has Superman been on Earth? But he's he not been he was, How long has he been on Earth? He's, he's been Superman been, since day he's 1 not, as a kid not, on he, Earth. He, he did and not the entire time he Kevin Costner not. was trying he to ha- you know to say, "Hey, don't show your power. Don't show your strength. The he's government will take you. The government will do this he's to not you." Superman is a kid. Okay. He's, he's not not always been Superman. You no. guys are missing no. the point. No. He hasn't had ch- practice using his powers like the way yes, he, he had has. Yes, he has. Kevin no, Costner is no. the one that kept him in check. Uh, that's why well, he no hasn't had... That's the whole point. He that's the whole purpose. Kevin Costner, his you father, you guys are killing me. You guys are killing He's been Superman since the day he's come that's to like Earth. That's like saying you own no. a gun all your life. If you haven't practiced target shooting it, it doesn't do you any good. No, 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 George. Uh, we're not talking about gun control. We're, we're talking about Superman. It's an, Superman it's has been Superman since the day he's come to Earth. No. No. Yes. He's been... He's been he was Clark. Kent. And it was Kevin Costner who said, control your power, control this, control no, this, don't let the world know this. Be humble. Be humble, Clark. Be humble, Clark. He says, right. You guys are Nobody's arguing with you about you that. You guys, dude. you got to see the big picture. He's Wait, always been Superman. He's about, always had no, the strength. We are talking you're, about you're, you're Zack Snyder's listening. vision of this movie. Talking. We're not talking about Superman in general in the DC universe. We are talking about Zack Snyder's movie. Just but I don't himself. recognize I Zack don't Snyder's what you authority. No, we are talking about Zack Snyder's movie. In this so you have movie, to contain yourself he didn't within have, the bounds of that movie. In this movie, he had had the yes, he technically had his powers all his life, but he hadn't hidden exercised using them in situations like this to know through experience what he should do to make a quick decision. Yes, he only had the two decisions, but like he, he was saying, Will was saying, well, wouldn't Superman have found another way? Maybe if it had been 10 more years from now, he might have had the experience to think of another solution real quick before he had to resort to killing Zod. But Zach was pointing out that he had no other choice that he knew of at this time. That's all we're saying. And that's the problem with Zack Snyder's portrayal. 
in when when Christopher Reeve did it, he had a whole movie where they introduced him. He had his introduction. He became Superman, and then he saved the world. And then he met Zod, and all that. Right, yeah. and then Super, the Superman two, he met Zod. Why didn't they introduce Zod Don't, in? All right, Man of Steel I, I, I have right? to jump in, and I'm sorry. I actually am not sorry. I do want to say this: in Zack Snyder's Superman, instead of breaking Zod's neck, couldn't he have? One, use his uh, heat vision to, you know, temporarily blind him or use his uh, uh, his super breath to freeze him to temporarily stop him from killing the family instead of breaking his neck. I'm not sure if he's ever had ever shown that he was he used his super breath in that first movie at that point. It, it, had they? I don't recall him doing that. Maybe he hadn't learned about it yet. Even Supergirl was learning how to use her powers. In the I think you're reading into it. I'm sure he knew all this stuff, but you got to remember, growing up, he was learning stuff that he could do that he didn't realize he could do, so he was experimenting. It was his father that kept him under wraps to prevent the government from experimenting but then, but on the, him. But the thing is, Anthony, listen to what you're saying. His father was saying, don't use your powers. So why you're is answering he going to be question. experimenting when he can't use it, when he's being Yeah, forbidden. but he's fighting a guy who's just as strong as he is, right. trying Zod to kill human beings. Zod has and he was experience. trying to figure out how to stop this guy from killing human beings. But Zod was a general in the military and had experience, and then on top of that had his powers. Kal-El did not. Yeah, but Kal-El had his powers a lot longer than That's Zod. The only thing reason Remember the in the movie... Yes, kal years, caused Zod to go crazy because of all the sounds, all the voices of people that he can hear, but that was whereas kal -El already knew how to he control said, that. No, he, that was he the only reason control he control his senses. I, I concentrate on one thing at a time. That's what he so said. So he had an advantage over Zod. A he did. Period, but it was enough Zod to balance it out so he could take him on without the experience that Zod had as a soldier. Because if Zod had had the time on Earth that he had, he would have lost. Because he would have been both a highly trained military soldier and had his powers. So, anyways, I don't recognize Zack Snyder's right. authority. Well, that's fine. Right. You don't want to recognize Zack Snyder. <laughs> Dora, you're not alone. He's not a, he's a, he, you know, he's he's gone. He's history. The thing is, when he's now in charge of the DC, these DC reimaginings. He's not done very well with Man of Steel. He's not done very well with Batman versus Superman. Regardless of what vision he had, this two-hour movie did not meet expectations compared to Marvel when they did Avengers. And now, when I hopefully get to see Civil War, I'm you know I'm going to be exp I'm going to be comparing that to Batman Superman. I'm sorry, this is the way it is. Well, and the thing is, now that you know he's doing Justice League, I think DC is like, oh crap. We need to take control. So they're actually butting heads with Zack Snyder over the vision. Because, again, we've heard of that, um, what was it, um, the, the, the super the super villain movies that are coming out, the uh, Suicide Squad. That they're having reshoots. There are millions of dollars of, in, in reshoots. They're reacting to, yeah. To Batman they're they're reacting to. So DC, DC, I mean, DC and Warner Brothers or whatever, they're like, we've got to do something. Why don't they just actually begin to sit down, put an outline together, and say where you want these movies to go? It's a simple thing. Thing. Yep. Two hours. You can have an outline and say, okay, now we know where we want to go with these movies. Well, it isn't just the two hours thing. Justice League was broken up. It's going to be so long that they are breaking it up into a part one and a part two. And I think that also worries them. Well, as long, I don't think they want it to be as dark as because they see what Marvel's doing. Back when Nolan was doing Batman trilogy, they didn't have Marvel. You know, we only had Batman. They could do it as dark as they like. Right, I remember from Tim Burton. So that's but really now. Began. But now we've got our Iron Man, you've got uh, Thor, you've, you've got Ant-Man, you've got the Avengers, you've got the Guardians of the Galaxy. Captain America. These are all great family funny movies that are action-packed as well. And DC is like, what do we do? Are we still being this dark, dank, you know, depressing villains, supervillains that are just not very fun to be with? And they even went dark with Winter Soldier, darker than usual, but they still managed to have it lightened up with humor in that darkness. I, I, I read a good thing about the way that you compare um, uh, Civil War, this, the clips that we've seen, I'm not, like, I haven't seen the movie, where you see all the action, it's in daylight. They're fighting in, out in the sun. 
Oh, yeah. Whereas in Batman Superman, they're always fighting in the dark. They're always fighting when it's dank and dark and no sun, and you can't see anything. <laughs> I mean, so the, the, the differences in how they portray these battles is also critical. Since, well, and, and again, this is not a spoiler because you, you'll hear it from rec- uh, non spoiler reviews. I don't care. I don't know. I don't know. Don't, 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 oh, it's, it's an opinion. It's not a, a spoiler. That I, fight you see in the trailers is probably the best fight filmed in cinematic history, a lot of people agree. Not just a Marvel movie. Well, define a lot of people because I don't agree. Go all. Well, you haven't seen it, so you. No, I'm asking you to cite it. Is that how you say it, George? Cite it. Collider movie. Collider movie news is very credible. Um, Fandango. Credible news. by whom? Oh my God! No, the, it would take the, me a while. The, it doesn't matter, George. What, what Kevin Feige and all the Marvel fights. people? I mean, I'll make my own opinion about the fights when I see the movie. I'm not really. I concerned saw about the fight people. scenes. From the trailers, and to me that doesn't seem credible. Oh, the only me. thing that I took away from it is when a Black Widow said to Hawkeye, "Hey, are we still friends?" And he his his response was, "That depends on how hard you hit me." Because the trailers don't show even a close to, and that's oh, a good thing. But d- d- George, okay, I don't want to talk about Civil War. Okay? All right, let's move on. Just look it up. I don't want to look it up. I just want to watch the movie. All right then. Yes. All right, so, so Justice League, uh, yeah, so they're butting heads with Zack Snyder. Um, let me see if I can get a quote here. I just want to know, are you Team Iron Man or are you Team Captain America? I'm always Team Captain America. I, I am Team, team Iron we, Man. We, we went over this, remember? I am Iron Man. Da, 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 I'm da. Team Black Widow. Right? And she's on <laughs> Team Iron Man. Well, I'm just her. I'm just. I'm I, her yeah, the, I'm, I'm Team right Black Widow. Right Whatever team. Her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's the spy. So that, she that can go anywhere like she, she likes. She can be yeah. whatever she likes. I'm right behind her. You know what it sounded like on my end? It sounded like Will said, "I'm teabagging Black Widow." That's what it sounded like. No, it didn't sound like that. Uh, it did to me. I hear things in my head. He just says that he was Team Black Widow. And she it just happens to be on Team Iron Man, who I am Team Iron Man because I cannot support a guy named Bucky. I just can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't do it. Well, there's nothing wrong with Bucky. Bucky, that's, that's let's just, say that's Bucky. Just, that's I'm just on just Team nickname. Bucky. That's just his nickname. I don't that's care. His, is that his real name? Bucky? Team Bucky. It's it's, it's James, not Team Bucky. It's James it's team Bucky. Captain it's America. James Bucky Buchanan. So it's his middle name. They just call it. No, no, no. His name is James it's, Buchanan. It's, 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 it's just that Captain America kept calling him. Steve Rogers called him Bucky. It and like I just can't Buck. support a guy named Bucky. I'm sorry. Yeah, Bucky was That's like because you're not young from Buck. World War II. You're not from the I'm not from World War II, okay? I'm not from that generation. I am Team Iron Man, though. Well, they were the greatest generation. Well, they were because they did more... And they sacrifice more than what ask generations do today, where they're like, I need my safe zone from bad words. <laughs> and also, this uh, following up on before we leave the subject of how of the trouble with the DC Universe, the guy who was going to direct the Flash uh, dropped out. I know, again. What happened there? Cre- creative differences. Uh, what That's happened like- there? Creative differences could, be, could mean a lot of things, though, but yeah. I, I know. But, That's what, a- but then again, Ant-Man's director... He dropped out from creative differences because he didn't want to link it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which was I was glad they got rid of him for that reason. Right. There, yeah, if you're not gonna link it to the actual universe, then you're out. I'm sorry. He wanted to completely keep the whole story um Edgar Edgar Burroughs or whatever his name is, he wanted to completely um keep his uh story separate from any connection or mention of the Avengers or any of that other stuff, and they Marvel was just like, uh no, that's not gonna fly. So, but they got- yeah, I mean, this is creative differences can be anything. I mean, they can they can classify that under oh he hit the director or he hit he hit the producer or he hit this woman or he did. It's just creative differences. He could be a you know uh, skirt chasing womanizer. Well, the oh, original it's just creative fe- differences. The original female director for Wonder Woman left, but for, I was glad to get rid of her because she had these crazy. She wanted to take crazy liberties, like have Wonder Woman have a pet tiger or something like that, and everybody was like. <laughs> That, I, that's a true story. You understand that Wonder Woman is over two thousand years old. Yeah, but she doesn't have a pet tiger. I mean, that going, you don't know that. So you don't know that. Just she hey, she's over two thousand years old. You don't know what she has. Well, they've never had her sh- shown her with a pet tiger in the comics. Just because it was never in the comics or on the television series, the woman is two thousand years old. 
you do realize Still. that Wonder Woman was written for the, the BDSM crowd. It was written by a guy who, and he wanted he intended her to be a lesbian Two and part of the BTSM. Yes, right. So she old. has the lasso of truth. I Means she she's in the bondage. She has the invisible spy plane or the invisible plane, which I've never wondered. You ever seen the the cartoons? Yeah. She's visible. She's sitting there. And then the planes are yeah, just flying invisible. around in I'm some like, plane well, that you can't see. see. <laughs> they, no, they did that for our sakes so we can see what she's doing. Right, but I mean, <laughs> we'll just make it invisible. I'll just put an outline around it and squiggle it. Squiggle. Oh, she's invisible. But no, she's sitting there flying this plane. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you ever see that Saturday Night Live with Sarah Michelle Getter and Jack Black as Spider Man and she was Wonder Woman? And they get inside the. Wonder Plane, and they're doing the Wonder Woman. He's like, dun, 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 dun. he's going Wonder Woman, and she's like jamming out while she's in the Invisible Plane. That was pretty funny. See, I loved, I loved the original Wonder Woman TV show. I mean, that was a fantastic. I want to see her do the spin in the and when she right. Changes. I mean, to me, I, I liked it. It was like six million dollar man. Because we never Wonder saw Wonder in the movie Woman. Batman v Superman. We never saw her become change into her clothes. No, exactly. you know, She just jumps out of nowhere and saves Batman from Doomsday. You guys yeah. understand that I prayed to Wonder Woman when I was in you, trouble. You prayed to Wonder yeah. Woman. I was like hey, eight years is... old. I got in trouble. I got sent to bed early, and while I was laying in bed, I prayed to Wonder Woman to come and save me. Yeah, I remember. Because they wouldn't let you watch it. Yeah, I was oh. mad because they wouldn't let me watch Wonder Woman oh. because I got in trouble and they sent me to bed early. And you know, technically, in, in the new universe and in this movie series, she's the daughter of Zeus, so she's a half-god, so you could worship her. Well, I didn't worship her. I prayed to her to come and save me. Oh, all right. Well, isn't that yeah. the same thing? I was like, Linda Carter, come and save me. <laughs> And she's the, thing is, the thing is, the thing with the spider, uh, the uh, the Flash, they're retaining his script though. This director are they? I didn't wrote, read that. Yeah, they wrote. He wrote the script, so he's left, but they've kept his script, which I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know much about him. I don't know. I don't know anything about Zeth Graham Smith. Um, All right. But so I don't know who the director is. I don't know what he is. Well, he's the, done the, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Apparently, they're having problems also. Well. James Wan from the Fast and Furious. Oh, he did the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. What oh, the right. Hell was and that? James Wan is supposed to be doing Aquaman, but now there's rumors going around that he, they might be having trouble with him too. He no, said, I no, 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 it's still going no, that's, on. That's but... when they retain. He's still on the project. They haven't got rid of him yet. Yeah, they're starting lots of rumors, but yeah, I, I just... uh, this is the thing. When they're 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 um they're uh, comics, so they're comic idol, the Batman, Superman, they're failing, they're flailing around. You know they're they're falling behind because the thing is was didn't DC always beat Marvel in in in, in so, sales and so forth because they had the it, better it actually superheroes. would fluctuate it would definitely it would teeter totter but I mean they start I mean back in the twenties thirties when they began when they ahead, in the beginning yes Marvel I mean they were just dominating right but during the like. 60s, 70s, Marvel started to go higher than the Right, because they got some good ones. They got Stan Lee right and so on. So, so they, yeah, they like the Hulk up. came in in the right. 60s. But and... then then you had the Batman, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, uh, you know, Tim Burton, who did Batman. Then you had the Superman movies, right, with Christopher Reeve. Now, again, first one and second one were pretty good. After that, they were crap. But they were still pretty big blockbusters. So they yeah. were pretty – you didn't say any Marvel comic or any Marvel heroes on the TV or screen, right? There. I mean, you saw Flash. Well, you had the Incredible Hulk TV Flash series and so forth, right? during the 70s. But they were, B, they were B characters. And so they were dominating. All of a sudden, you had you know, Christopher Nolan's Batman's coming out, and it was just dominating. All of a sudden, bat, uh, you know, uh, Iron Man takes the box office. Then you got the Hulks, and then you got the, the Thors, and then you got the Avengers. And all of a sudden, whammo. Marvel is so far in the lead that DC is just it's like it's like a Wile E. Coyote. He's run off the cliff, his legs are still pumping, he still keeps moving. All he has to do is look down and all of a sudden, uh oh, and boom, he's fallen to the bottom of the deck. Their strategy of trying to do the opposite of Marvel is not working. It's not working. Unless it's they get better working. directors to pull it off. Exactly. They need directors that can actually have a vision. If they wanna if they wanna have this multiverse, they wanna have these things linked, then they've gotta be linked. Right, you've got to have continuity they can do between it movies. If they get a different director, just Zach Hamilton is too wild in his thinking process that he doesn't care what works as far as. But unlike the executives, which I'm sure is part of the problem, he doesn't care that that they're upset about the numbers. He's got a vision in his head and he wants to stick to it no matter what. But he, but they're like uh, looking at their numbers and going, mm, "That's not a good idea." Yeah, so I don't know. I think they've got real problems over in DC land. I'm not worried about the dropout of the directors because they did before. 
in the past, they lost the original Wonder Woman director. And like I said, Ant-Man lost Edgar Burroughs. And that turned out okay. So losing a director because they have creative differences doesn't mean the series, the whole thing is in trouble. It just means a couple of directors dropped out. But they've been announcing movies so far ahead anyways that there's going to be changes. I mean, who knows if The Rock's still going to be in that Shazam movie by 2020. Cause that's right, a long but... Well, the thing is, I mean, yeah, you don't know who's going to die or whatever. I mean, yeah. So, the, but the thing is, when you see Marvel, and they, I mean, they've changed directors and so forth, but they've been quiet about it. And they keep pretty much lit on, on the, the releases and their stuff. But the way that they do, uh, market their movies, they're fun, they're, they're entertaining, and they're profitable. <laughs> And then you see DC. They've had a couple of not so good movies. They've not been well received. I, and it I looks like it looks like they're scrambling. When they, even though they, they may have been just because they, it looks like they're actually getting in conflicts with these directors. They don't like where they're going, so they're actually. It looks like they're they're just they're reacting again. They're just trying to find some method to their madness to get out of the, this swamp that they're in. And I don't know whether they're going to be able to get out of it or not. My analogy is this. I look at if it was like rooting for your favorite baseball team. You know, I've always wanted DC to do well when, and, and, and it's not looking too good, but I'm still like, you know, it's my home team. You know, I'm, I'm rooting for them. But then when I saw Civil War, it's like watching Babe Ruth knock it out of the park. Um, it's like, you know, or it's just, it's like, all right. You're going back it. to Civil War again, George. I'm just giving an analogy about how after, how after I saw that movie, I realized there's no I way that DC is going to be able to compete. They needed to change their strategies just because of how much of a home, home run it is. That doesn't give anything away. Just, anyways, it was I, I thought it was a fitting thing to say. So anyways, um, not just for the hell of it. Um, it had meaning. But anyways, so yeah, so DC... We'll see. I, I, I think Zach should be fired from Justice League. I think they should get it. Or have someone else be a co-director. Some Someone oversee what he's doing. Don't just let him do what he wants. See, I think I think Marvel and DC are like Ali Frazier. You know, the thriller in Manila. Uh, you know, DC was Frazier. They were boxing. They were beating up Ali. He was on the ropes. And all of a sudden, Marvel's come off the ropes with his rope-a-dope, and they are just taking it to Frazier now. His rope you know, Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. I mean, this is it. I mean, they are in serious trouble. They need to respond, and they need to get a plan. They can't just start releasing movies that willy-nilly oh, have they a did continuity. Make their... They made their money. It's it was just it just got released. It's the seventh highest grossing superhero film, even though it got all that critical slamming. But it could have been a lot better. It could have been yeah. better. It could definitely have been better. People didn't. I know people. Who I mean, didn't it wasn't go to considered a failure. As I know far people as who didn't go to see it because of the reviews. It didn't. It didn't fail as far as like its box office success. Um, it just could have done ten times better. It for, could have been for a billion dollars. It could have made over a billion dollars right. with that movie. Because it's Batman yeah. and Superman. It should have made over a billion dollars. And that's the reason the, the two iconic characters together is what's... What, that's what, why they screwed up. People they couldn't have, help. You have your two iconic characters together in the same movie. And, and one it doesn't one. break a billion dollars. Are you kidding me? Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's it, we'll see what happens. Um, I I mean, like this, Wonder Woman's being directed by Patty Jenkins. She's a she's done episodes of Game of Thrones, I think. I think. Or is that that was that the first person that they fired? I don't remember. But she's done stuff, and uh, she's got a good uh, repertoire of uh, movies. Um, I just can't think off the top of my head what they are, but I know that they're good. So, and from the previews they've given it, the tone of it I like. So I think it's got a good chance of making up for Batman v Superman by itself, which would be nice. Because um, Wonder Woman should start off out of the gate strong because she's never been on the screen before, and people obviously love it. So her standalone movie, I have pretty good faith in so we'll see what happens unless Ma, unless dc pulls last minute changes because of all this fear like they're doing with suicide squad and it messes up her direction but we'll see because that can happen too they did that to uh fantastic four that last one uh, the guy that directed it from what everybody was saying it wasn't his fault that they messed with his film fox messed with his film so much it, it didn't come out at all the way it was supposed to and you know he got pissed because that it made it a failure well so. the, you know fox and sony they are able to do Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four because they bought the rights from Marvel, but they don't know the characters. Marvel knows the characters. Yeah, they've lived with them. They have brought them up, and that's why 
you know, they should work with Marvel to get those characters right. They are screwing up Fantastic Four because Fox, Fox think oh, we got to have this type of movie. They're doing the same thing DC. They're responding, and they've got crap movies. They're crap. They need to just go back and say, look, we will work with you. You'll take, you know, a percentage of it, and you'll take a percentage of it, and let's get these characters right, and let's make a lot of money. Well, the problem that they had in Fantastic Four that I think is possibly going to repeat itself with some of these movies coming out is... They actually made all these last changes to to the director's vision because of the reaction to things they were putting online, like pictures and clips and stuff, and, and fans weren't taken too kindly to it, so it was causing them to panic and say, oh... Yeah, they we, were we responding to it. Just Lee, if you've got a director, even if it's Zack Snyder, let him do the movie. Don't fuck around with it. Excuse me. Don't screw around with it. Just let him do the movie. If it's a hit, it's a hit. If it's not a bomb, it's a bomb. Then you can fire him from the next Too much one. money and too many people who have... Exactly. You know, yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's why directing big movies like that are always stressful for them. All right. Um, yeah, so that's that. this is something we'll keep an eye on news-wise, see if anything changes in the Zack Snyder domain. Um, I, if I have to make a prediction, I don't think he's going to end up directing Justice League. I really, I think he's going to say creative differences and they're going to call in somebody else. I really do. No, I think he's going to do Justice League. He's, he's already filming it. They're filming it now. So. Oh yeah, that's right. They did start filming it. They're they? filming it. They're filming number one right uh, now. That's, so. I forgot about that. Maybe they he won't do part two. Maybe he's, he won't he's do on, part he's two. He's on Justice League one. So. Maybe he won't do part two. But anyways, it's possible. Um, now, did either one of you guys watch Peggy Carter? I did. I stopped I did watching. not. All right, I stopped watching it, but apparently from what they're saying, they said this last year too, but I think it's more credible this time. They're saying it may not come back next year. Yeah, it didn't do very well with the, the, the viewers this year. She, they've changed from New York to L.A. Oh, it was, did a, they? Good, it was good. I mean, it was very entertaining. I haven't watched it in, since season two started. But, well, this is, yeah. I mean, season one was fantastic. It was in New York. What's Peggy against, Carter? Peggy She's Carter. The agent, the, uh, Captain America's Captain America's the there. first one, the, the, the first Avenger. She's been, she was love in Ant-Man. There was an older clip, Peggy Carter. Yeah, well, the, the the, I'm not into love interest stuff. I'm more into... She wasn't a love interest. She was her own, she was her own iconic... A hero in this. Well, I mean, was that on Netflix? No, it was. No, on, it's on it's ABC. On it's, ABC. It, was, um, it was always put on when Age of Shield would be done for the season. Right, yeah. it starts yeah. in January. Her, and her ends show ends would in start May. after that, and then when it was done, then Age of Shield would come. Yeah, back. well, yeah, it was a good show. You should it. see it if it comes on Netflix. What's the first Carter. season? It's okay, good. I'll it watch had, it. It's got stuff like Howard Stark. It's got it's got the it leads I mean, into it little good. things. It was good entertainment. I mean, put aside that she's a woman. I don't. I know that you don't like women in. in <laughs> I don't support. think that he likes Wonder Woman. So that's you know that's not true. Well, he just. What are you talking about? I love women. I I look. I love I love Jessica Jones. Yeah, I love sure um, I'll give him, I'll Penny give him Dreadful. I mean, excellent shows, right? This is um, a good show. She was a good. It was a the good Unbreakable show. Kimmy Schmidt. But I think uh, come you, on you, now. You, Again, I'm t- I'm asking I'm asking you if you get a chance, watch it. it you know, okay, show. I'll watch it. I just didn't. Uh, I didn't. I never watched Peggy Carter. You know. I mean, it's set in you, World War Two, so there, yeah. But the you know, last I, Carter I watched on TV was Jimmy. Well, no, thing is, <laughs> it's right after Superman. It's right after Captain America has crashed into the uh, the Atlantic. You know, the North Atlantic, okay. and so they pick up right from then. And she's this woman, and she's in the this. She SSR, becomes pretty much the head thing. of Shield, the starter. And the thing of is, yeah, the thing is. She's trying to fight. They they think they think of her as just a secretary, right? So it's that hey, go get me coffee, go get me this, and then she gets into this thing where she uh, Stark gets accused of murder, and she got to clear his name, and it was a fant- The first season was fantastic. My she's doing all this stuff. She's having to fight the bosses because she's a woman in a man's world. It, it was, was a good show, but uh, it was I think great. The reason I got bored of it so easily is because if you're, it's like with Agents of Shield. Yeah, they're using Shield characters, and some of them now have powers. But if you're going to do a show that's been based on the Marvel Universe and turn it into a TV show, I don't want to see a bunch of normal humans as agents. I want to see superhero shit. Oh, sorry. No, stuff. I, I like this because it was setting up the beginning of S.H.I.E.L.D. It, it was, was interesting up... in some areas, but then it, for me it just got repetitive. I liked it. I liked it. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm uh, sorry that it's not going to be coming. She's a good actress. And she I like, is. She's fantastic. I like that they used the period piece stuff, but after a while it was just getting like, eh, I just didn't find it How as exciting. How dare you? Say period and a woman in the same <laughs> sentence. Period piece. It, it was a, it was, oh, it was a good too. show. It was a good show. It was well acted. It was well directed. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was better than Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because yeah. it was a lot of fun. They had they had action sequences. They had fight sequences. It, I mean, 
you know, it, it wasn't all about they the superheroes. They had uh, Howling Commandos in it sometimes, Right, too. I mean, it was just, I, I loved it. It was it was a good show. It was just fun to watch. It was an hour, you just, man, you sat down. If you got on Netflix, it's 40 minutes. Oh, it's it's great. I mean, if they do put it on Netflix, I hope they do. I'm going to binge to watch them because they're There was a couple fantastic. episodes I liked where, in season one, I think it was, where she, uh, they would, on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they would find the item that could turn people into, the Absorbing Man got it or whatever. Right. One, and, so, and then and then they show how they uh, shield acquired it when they right. but with and Peggy Carter with raiding an early Hydra base with the Highland Commandos and getting a hold of that alien tech and then right. you know and then it goes back to the agents of shield following and up then, with this, that. This is what I wanted. I, I wanted season three because it will be setting up how Shield came about because they're not Shield right now. They're SSR. They're, they're, this, they're, they're the, the stars. Secrets, of shield, right. Right. They're the secret agents. See. They're the, not, not even the prequel. So it was set up how S.H.I.E.L.D. came about. That's what I wanted to I didn't even to. notice that Agent Carter was the girl at the beginning uh, with, with um, Pym in the, in the early 1986 or whatever it is. In the beginning of Ant-Man. I didn't, I didn't know because they used the age makeup on her. And right, then, right. And I, di- I didn't recognize it was her at first. And I, had, I watched it a second time. I'm like, oh, that's Peggy Carter. She has a cameo. She's older. <laughs> right, yeah. She was, in, she was in Winter Shoulder too. Yep. Was in the, in the so 1980s. I, I, yeah, I, I, I like I like her character. I like her, I like it a lot better than the Agents of Shield. I tell you that much. All right, but it's, well, it's a shame. The thing is, she's got another she's got another part that she's going to be doing this fall. It could still come back though, because yeah, ABC, I mean, it, it, it's, you know. it's very it's up in the air. Hopefully they do because it's only thirteen episodes. They can well, do thirteen. ABC episodes. doesn't ditch their shows as easily as other. I'm hoping they not. I'm hoping they're going to bring it back at least for a third season. Figure it out. Just give us, give me to the end of how the Shield came about, and it would have that continuity with Agents of Shield and so forth. And we would get that part at least. Give me another thirteen episodes. Show me how Shield came about, and then you can say adios. Sounds good. Well, we're a little under an hour, but I think we pretty much covered most of what we were going to say except maybe one topic uh, which I'll save for next time and eh, we can do a shorter episode I want to talk week. about Flash oh, oh, let's okay. talk about Flash let's talk about Flash we'll do that in, uh, as a last even time. though I haven't seen last night's episode I will watch it but let's talk about it it was really good you go ahead we'll start the roll on that <laughs> well you know my, my theory I have a love hate relationship and I was screaming on my TV again last night because you know the thing with Flash is and I, I love his character. I love how he portrays it as this kid. The thing is, I always imagine him as like Spider-Man. You know, Spider-Man, he's this cocky kid, but he makes mistakes. The thing with the, the, what they're doing with this, and I think why it's, it's not working so well on a TV like ABC, or in this case CW, is because you have 23 episodes. If this was a 13-episode uh, you know, season. You could have these condensed uh, uh, storylines. It would be complete. We've got another three episodes wait before we get to the ending of this, right? He's not got his powers back still, so it's been two episodes that he's not the Flash. He's going around, they've got this hologram that he's on this treadmill and his little sidekick buddy has made a hologram that runs around the town thinking, so tricking the, the bad guys into thinking he's the Flash and he's got this little flicker. Anyway, Doom comes into town Zoom says I'm a zoom. Sorry, takes over this. Says I'm the big bad guy. It's my town now. I love when he killed those cops. That was you cops down the dark. So the cops go over to Jitters, the the coffee shop, reset up, and they set up this thing because he brings over his uh, from his zooms uh, timeline Earth two. Um, (laughs) This is where it gets confusing. Uh, what's his name uh, in uh, Earth One? Um, uh, his little buddy, the little computer geeky guy. Oh, Cisco's brother. Cisco. Cisco. Um, he has a brother in Earth One, and you know they, they're brothers. Well, in Earth Two, Cisco was the bad guy, and his brother is also a bad guy with superpowers. Anyway, Rupture. That was his name. Rupture. In Earth Two, Z- uh, uh, Cisco killed his own self. Or had uh, Zoom killed him, right? So his doppelganger in Earth Two is now dead. Anyway, he's go- uh, uh, Cisco's gone to see his brother because he's had this little vision. They get jumped by his brother's doppelganger from Earth 2. It gets really confusing. So you've got two of his brothers running around. One's a super-powered nerf herder, and he's got this side thing, these swashing things around. Anyway, Zoom tells uh, this uh, rupture, go kill the cops. They piss me off. Go kill them. And Flash and his little buddy teams, they say, okay. We're going to set it up. They have the little hologram. They trick a rupture. They stun him. Zoom gets word of it, and he goes in, and he kills all the cops. And it's the way dead. they did it. That was so dark. And he's dark. just zooms, zipping around. He cuts them all up. They're dead. 
and he shows how he shows how they did it in a way that like from your from the point of view of normal people it's like bling and then everybody just drops but the thing is that this is what gets me at the start of this episode um what's his face that big professor dude says look I have a way for you to get your power back. Even though it's very dangerous, and at the end of the episode, it, it proves to be really dangerous. He said, look, all we'll do is we'll expose you to this this uh, this energy wave. Recreate again. the accident that made him right. the flash. Yeah. We'll, we'll expose you, and you'll get it. Throughout the entire episode, he's like, no, I don't want to do it. It's too dangerous. Cops die. Let's do it. I'm like, I'm screaming at my TV. Why didn't you do that 40 minutes ago? <laughs> You could have done it at the store, had your powers back, or been dead or something, and you would have never had to worry about it. By I mean, the way, Will, are you aware of... I'm, I don't know, because you're not... Uh, you, you're pretty DC knowledgeable. Are you aware of what happened to Jesse and um, um, uh, the son there, uh, Wally? Are you aware of what, what's about to happen I'm thinking, to him? I'm thinking this is where Wally West gets his superpowers. Cause he's and, the, her, and you know who she is? Well, yes, she's the... Uh, I forget. I forget Jesse what Quick. Got. Yes. They're both going to be... They just got the speed so force the, the, that goes so right through them. So next season, you're going to have more speed, which is fine. I don't have a problem with Wally West getting his speed, Some people think he's going to go over to Legends of Tomorrow, but we'll, well see. It could be, yeah. It could cross over. But the thing is, that's fine. Wally West is a speedster. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with her being a speedster. Have more speedsters. I'm just not liking this Zoom character because everything that's happened at this point is on the flash. He's on... Barry Allen, he caused it. This is what gets me about him. This is what making me so mad about him. Zoom was on her too. He was trapped. He couldn't get back. Just leave him over there. He wanted to save that role. Right, he that wanted just... to be the hero. Now he's got no powers. He's walking around. He's slow as hell. And he exploded. He's at having the end. to take taxi cabs and buses everywhere. I mean, come on. And I'm, looks... like, I'm, I'm screaming at my TV. He's like, this is my fault. I'm like, yeah, it was your fault. You screwed up. He appears to blow up when they try to recreate the accident right. and everybody thinks he's dead. At the end dead, of the movie, all of a he's sudden, in the speed he, force. he's like he's been vaporized. But he's in the speed and, force, that's what I gathered. Because right. in the he's promo for next week... And he's... this force zooms down the corridor and hits Wally West and hits and uh, the professor's daughter. Who comes out to be Jesse? Yeah, Jesse, they got hit, right? it was a speed force. That's what they got hit. Right, with. exactly. So they're, obviously they're going to become speed too, which is fine. But then all of a sudden now, Zoom comes into the room, picks up his tattered uniform, and says, "Ah, you tried to make him a flash again, and you killed him." Zooms back out again, and all of a sudden fades to black. We don't know what happened. No, the promo <laughs> show is just him. you're just dragging it out. The promo is, from what I gather, because he's in what seems to be like a dream Yeah, role. he's in some kind of limbo it, or it's something. It's the speed, from what I've gathered, I think it's it, based on a, something that happened in the comics. He's in the speed force. Something right. similar happened to him in the comics. But the, okay, now again, the thing, about, the thing about this is, right, where you've got this force now. I mean, uh, I mean the thing with the, the Flash is... Okay, they've had 23 episodes. We've still got three episodes to go. It's going to take us to the end of May to get to the end of this damn episode. Most series at this point have ended. And he right? still won't have his powers back. Right, no, he's, 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 no, he's, he's, he's got I think he's got him back at this point. He's I think he'll get it back at this beginning of the next season. Right, but the they no, have no, to no. drag this out. They, you no, know, they you, right, but the Flash why, never actually why, drags why, this why stuff out. How do you know, George? Episodes to go. They why actually, it's one thing I like about The Flash is they don't drag these things out. That's what a lot of people like about it. I'm they just going to say that they're dragging it out. Two episodes without his powers? Well... At the end Come of this episode, now. what I think they're going to gonna drag it out the next three, and yeah. then the next season he'll have his powers. He'll back. he'll have his powers back next episode and the one after, and, and all three. Because what they did work. It's just that he it went okay. Work too, it, you know this is being recorded, so next week when he doesn't have his powers, he will. I'm going to call you on it. He's in the you Speed Force next week, and when he comes out of it, he's going to have his powers because he's I'm in the Speed Force. I'm going to call you on it. You know, at all the right. end of this episode. When he's disappeared, he's been like vaporized. I'm laughing sardonically, thinking, "Ah, ha, ha, now you're dead." Now this what? episode, by the way, oh, next week's episode is the one that Kevin Smith directed. Yeah. So, and but, I already know he has his powers back because there's behind the scenes that show the Flash running in in whatever episode Kevin directed, and that's next week. It was a dream sequence. <laughs> Could be. But anyway, the thing is, the thing is, most episode, most most uh, um, uh, TV shows by this point beginning of May, have ended their run for the season. 
And now we're going into summer programming. We've still got three episodes left. They have, they, they've had all the way through March and April where they didn't have any episodes on TV. Why couldn't have we seen some of this in the beginning of the end of March, early April? And by this point, we would have ended this season. Well, it's we because they took a lot of breaks. For next That's season. the only reason it dragged out this long. But again, this is what I don't like about these 23-episode season, 23 episode seasons. Because they got to take all these breaks because there's more than 23 weeks. There's been two, the two times. And today. There's been two times this season where they had three-week breaks between I don't, They don't need them. We've still got three episodes. It, it's annoying, <laughs> too, when they do that. They could have put them in there somewhere. Yeah. And all they had was reruns on the when they were doing that. I don't know why they had these breaks. Put them in there. Let me see them and let me get to May. I think, yeah, NBA, I don't know. I don't remember season. why they said they did it. There was a reason, but I don't know. But anyway, so, I, like, like I said, I'm probably frustrated because like this, this love-hate relationship I'm having with this TV show is really pissing me off right now. I think, I think your expectations are too high. See, when I watch oh. TV shows like this, I have no expectations. I just want to be entertained. It's like porn. You just watch it. Well, I have been entertained up until this point, but it's just when he makes stupid mistakes over and over and over again, I'm like, come on. Well, that's just stupidity. I mean, right. when you're constantly like... doing the same thing, expecting a different result. <laughs> That's I'm like, not getting it. You, why, 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 is, why is he making the same mistake? I don't have a problem when he makes a mistake. Because he's young, dumb. Yeah. In full speed force. <laughs> right, so, he has oh no my, speed uh, force because he's no longer the Flash. He's the not moment. the Flash. He's Barry Allen. They need to, re- they need to take he's the Flash Barry off. He's Barry Allen. Say, yeah. This is the Barry Instead Allen of, show. <laughs> this is the in Barry this Allen episode show. of The Flash, they should call it, in this episode of The Barry Allen Show. Right, they had an episode. Should. They have had episodes where this, uh, as a powers. joke, even say this is the Barry Allen show. Right, no longer the Flash. <laughs> I would laugh yeah. at that. I'm like, okay, now you're making fun of yourself. Now you're being funny. Now I can actually be entertained by you because now you're mm-hmm. actually assuming, you know, the credibility, the incredi- incredulity. Of I him. mean, even the hell, they call they called it Smallville because ninety percent of the time, uh, Clark Kent was not Superman. <laughs> Because they, right. they made a promise when, when they started the show. They said 10 years before uh, the final episode, they said you'll never see him in his costume. And you really didn't. Cause they Hence didn't the see, word Smallville. They, they kind of made, you didn't get a clear shot of him in the costume, so they kept that promise. Yeah. I know. That's what other thing it They me only about. had little references. One time there was this, a tornado, and then Clark had to save uh, What's Her Face, you know, Kristen Crook. And he's like, I felt like I willed myself to get to her and save her. That's when know, he was that, like that, talking that whole, about that flying. Whole, that whole scene, right? that whole, that, yeah. you know, I like the first. I, I stopped watching it after like three or four seasons or something because it got what? really stupid. Small I watched though, all of it. Small but though, I, 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 I got back into it when he was when he moved to like wherever he was. There was, was a small season or two that was a little right. weak, but yeah. but the thing is, again. Because of DC, you couldn't see him in the. You couldn't see Super. You couldn't see right. Superman. You, we couldn't yeah, have, you only saw Clark Kent. Why can't we see him? It's part of the part of his mystique. Oh, this is what I'm thinking. What they're going to do with Gotham? Are we ever going to see Batman? No. no. Are we going to see the classic Joker? And no. 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 We're not. Which they, is they pissing me off because of the rights. Get, which the is right. why I don't watch that show. <laughs> Obviously, I would be eternally frustrated watching Gotham because I'm like, where's Batman? It's where's Joker? Batman. Where's said, Penguin? This is you not know? supposed. To, this is not meant to be like Smallville's version of Batman. Batman's version for Smallville, though they did actually have a pitch for a show called Grayson about Dick Grayson on his own uh, that was supposed to be made uh, as a spin-off to Smallville, but uh, it never happened. Anyway, but any anyway, that's that's the thing about these shows. That's why, you know, the Arrow, um, uh, Flash, Supergirl. At least we get to see the hero. At least we get to see them in their costume. Gotham right? is not meant to be that type of a show, though. Uh, so. Even though Supergirl's pissing me off because he won't bring Superman in yet. I'm yeah. liking George's thing where they need to bring the guy from Smallville in. Let me see him. Put him in his suit uniform like he's like his costume like he's supposed to be. Make him Superman. That would be great continuity. I think it could still happen. It's always possible. I'm hopefully, I, I'm hopefully there because he would be great as Superman. But the thing is, from what this is why they couldn't bring Batman into Smallville, and this is why you couldn't see him in the suit. Uh, from what they said, it's there's there's when the when there are movies being produced with the character, they can't sometimes use them on TV at the same time because it's a it's a rights thing. Um, it, it, I don't just, know. A, Agents of Shield's able to do it. Well, that's, <laughs> they have a different arrangement going on though. It's connected to the same thing. It's not no. Exactly. It's because Marvel has a crap together. Right. It's exa- it well, goes no, back it's because to our beginning ABC. talking about Zack Snyder. Yeah, Marvel knows what the hell they're doing. DC the CW does is not. owned by DC, so yeah, they should have the rights to do it. I don't know. There you go. All right. 
Let's well, I do want to say let's this, though. Let's that? just blame it on Zack Snyder. So, you know, the, 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 the past movie, Star Wars The Force Awakens, right? Everyone saw it. They, you know, Dizzy yes. Ridley, you know, John A Boyega, New Hope times stuff two. Stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. A New Hope. I just want to talk about salary. So, Harrison Ford got paid $25 million. And he got to die like he wanted to 30 okay. years ago. Ooh. And he got to die the way he wanted. Plus, he gets a 0.5% of the box office gross, which could be up to $9 million, right? So, $25 million plus $9 million, what, $34 million, right? Daisy Ridley and John Boyega both got paid $450,000. And Carrie Fisher got paid $1.5 million. I know. I, what does that the, tell you? The, this again, the discrepancy between pay—not just between men and women, but the stars and the super. This is the thing. It's like superstars, like athletes, right? Why would the super athlete get in twenty-five, thirty million when the guy who's protecting you on the front line is getting paid? He's getting paid 000. ten thousand, right? right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I exactly. Said, you're paying him less to hey, protect Ross. your superstar. Come on, you're hey, paying your superstar. Well, he's gonna die in the movie. He's not gonna right, win right. Million. So why is how, why is George? What, I mean, uh, George. I mean, why is um, uh, freaking what's the dude? Harrison Ford getting paid twenty five million dollars. Carrie Fisher is only getting paid one point five million dollars, and she had a bigger role. Yes. I, I mean, I mean, and you're gonna pay me twenty five million dollars to die in a movie? It has to do with this. Their um. Their credits discussions of, of, what worth. of sexism and a lot of shouting. Are you sure this isn't the GNT show? No, it's uh, the, we're talking about the salaries. Again, of, it's ridiculous. Uh, Force well, that, that's a huge. You gotta admit that's right? a huge discrepancy. But the movie opens up with Joy and Boyega, right, and Daisy Ridley. They're they, the stars of the show, and they, they both got paid four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, did, did they get any percentage no, of the profits? No, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars was. How much okay. did Mark Hamill get paid for his one non? -speaker? I don't know. It doesn't I doesn't say. A lot. Uh, he didn't even speak in this. I show. don't think so. I don't I'm think sure he probably got exposure. a couple of million, but I don't think he's he, he didn't get that. He didn't get paid as much him, as him Harrison Ford. Him and Daisy will get a lot more money in episode two. I'm you know, because sure. they, they better. I mean, that's twenty five million dollars to walk around on a broken leg and then get killed by your kids. Oh, and he's coming back for episode eight as some kind of a dream sequence. So he'll be getting money just for that part too. Oh, they better God. pay him a dollar. I mean, that's it. Yeah, that's the, he shouldn't get any more he's money a, he's for this. He's worth a dollar. He's worth a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Harrison Ghost. Ford is like yeah, 70 no. years old. Yeah. He's not worth, you know, what he was before. Well, Granted, he did, you know, the other movies, you know. Um, you know, he's still trying to milk out Indiana Jones. To come yeah, out he totally single. is. Yeah. yeah. But that's he's not, him, not the, the same person that's anymore. More, uh, he's doing it for the money now. He's like Sylvester Stallone with Rambo. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Rocky. I mean, Spielberg. he's doing it for the Rocky. money. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but um, th uh, from what I heard, I, re when she's training with Luke in the temple, she has a, a vision of Han Solo trying to tell her something. It's not a force ghost. It's just a vision from the force. Um, and that's why he's in it. So even Yeah, but Dollar, Harrison Dollar, Ford was it, not force sensitive as Han no, Solo in the entire really movie it's series. Vision. It's a vision. It's not Pay him a dollar well, and say thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. I would just, com I would just computer generate him. Right, yeah. and not even bring him on. Exactly, we've got your for likeness. fear he may break we another scan leg. You. We can just use your likeness. You, you know how you. Luke bye saw bye. Vader in the in the tree, and he fought it, and it wasn't really Vader. It was like it's like that. It's a forced illusion from her mind. We're talking it's about called pain, drugs. Talking okay. about pain, it, or, it could be peyote. That's true. Space peyote. Care about what, what, he, what how much he's going to be in there. This this discrepancy between what he's getting, which he's not really he's not really worth that much in this movie. He didn't do that much. He hobbled he around. Really, I, yeah, he hobbled he, around on his broken leg. He didn't Chewie do much. much of the really? He, he was yeah, right and then he got excited for shooting for shooting the bowcaster. Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, I like this gun. He's holding, uh, most of the time, he's holding his hands up and looking. Confused. Hell, I could see that for ten thousand dollars in a movie. He's kicking that's, in. that's what the fans wanted, though. They wanted to see him again. I didn't want it. I did. I wanted Daisy him. Ridley. I'm glad well, he's he was dead. dead. She when was he in... died, I'm like, thank you. He's dead. But he wanted to die since Return of the. He kept I wanted him. John Boyega. He kept asking no, for Lucas. Go ahead. I I wanted the red rocket, man. The red rocket. The red rocket. The, <laughs> the red, red rocket. rocket. Red rocket. 
<laughs> like, oh my gosh, Chewbacca pretty much stole the show after. Oh, he they, know, gave, they made him great in that movie. But um, Harrison Ford has wanted to, Han to be killed off um, by Lucas since uh, the Empire Strikes yeah, Back. He should, he, he should have died the only in reason they froze two, him in Carbonite. Five. The only reason they froze him in Carbonite at the end of uh, Empire was because they weren't sure if he was going to come back. He to actually return. wanted to die in the Return of the Jedi. Well, Just no, he wanted point. to die in the. He, he wanted, wanted to die, to die, die in the Han, Han Solo. Harrison Ford said that he felt that Han Solo should have been killed off in The Return of the Jedi. He, he said it himself. He did. Harrison but, Ford. But he first approached Lucas about the idea because he wasn't sure if he wanted to come back for Return of the Jedi. When, so that at the end of the Empire, they froze him so that if he did come back, they could have them find Han Solo. And if he didn't, he's off somewhere being frozen for some other movie. And But when he did Return of the Jedi, he kept trying to convince Lucas this would be a great story to kill him in. And he wouldn't do it. He he wanted him to die in Empire. Can you he, provide the your source for that? He I talked want to about read that it. on an interview with, on Jimmy Kimmel. Can you provide your source for that? I want to I, read it. I can, but I can't do it right Thank this you. Second. Yeah, not right now. Let's do it later. All right. But yeah, so he's been wanting him dead, and then he finally got his wish, and JJ knew it. So killed by his own kid. Stupid millennial. <laughs> millennial Falcon. Ha ha. See what I did there. <laughs> I wish I could be evil just like you. Oh I want to finish what you started. Please make me evil. Please, Please make me Please. evil. Please. Evil. And did he really, really think he was going to walk up to him and he was just going to go, okay, Dad, you're right, and hand him his lightsaber? I'm a bad guy. Look at me. I killed my dad. I killed and, my daddy. And what's up with all these bridges with no walkway holder? Oh, come you know? on, that's... that's right, that's, that's, that was the dumbest standard. thing in this world. Why would you go no, out no, there no, on no. some stupid platform with no safety net? That's what or, they do. Some, I mean, that, that's how they know, build things in the dumb. Empire. These walkways that don't, don't go anywhere. Dumas people. <laughs> You better be a well balanced officer. I mean, it was a great movie. It was fantastic. Dude had a broken leg and he still walked out on there. I tell you, this, don't you think you want to fall off? <laughs> you know, I have a lot of you know little nick picky things about that movie. People say, "Oh, it's great movie, great movies." No, there's a lot of still better movies of uh, uh, Star Wars movies. There was a lot of stupid movies. Don't get me wrong. I did cry when Han Solo died. I didn't want I him didn't, to die. I did not die. I did. Oh. I love Han Solo, but the, fi- one... the fact of the matter is, I was still pissed at his stupid emo kid. Is like, look at me! I just killed my dad. I'm a bad. I'm I'm a bad guy. And then How he gets awesome. his ass kicked by Ray. <laughs> right? Then he gets beat up by a girl who doesn't even know how to use the lightsaber. He killed his Actually, dad. Actually, I wish like, I was, I was evil. Well, anyways, I like Poe Dameron in his black X-wing. I thought that was pretty cool. Nobody talks about him. Why does it have to be black? Do you not look at Tumblr? There's all sorts of Poe on Finn stuff there. Uh, I don't know if I agree that that's going to happen because I've heard that Lando Calrissian's daughter is going to be Finn's love interest in the second movie. But anyway, it, it, they can think whatever Finn they want. Finn wants him some dark chocolate. Yeah. Or, Maybe sorry. there's a triangle between him and him. And, uh, Why has he got to be dark? Because he's got a black X-Wing. So he I thought Finn was uh, getting along with Daisy Ridley. Poe likes the Classic the triangle dark stuff. That's what I mean. Oh, Poe, Poe. No, Classic triangle stuff. Poe, Poe. The Poe, Poe. The Popo, the five. See, yeah, but the from Popo. the rumors I've heard, Lan- uh, they, they've been separated for almost for a while in the next movie. While she's training with Luke, and he meets Lando's daughter, and she and him. It's going to be like twenty years before the next one starts. I mean, it's going to be twenty years, so Luke's going to be like one hundred and five or something. No, it's coming out. Uh, it's no, coming no, out no, next year. In, in in movie time. No, next year is Rogue <laughs> One. That's in two thousand seventeen in December. Right. Right. Um, oh, that's this year, December. Oh, no, is that no, this Rogue, year? No, Rogue, this year. Rogue One comes out. Rogue, Rogue One's, one's this, year. this year. My bad, my bad. Rogue, Rogue One this is this year in Every December. Every Christmas is going to be a Star Wars. Movie. That's right. I'm looking forward to Rogue One. That's going to be am, a good That's movie. what I'm looking forward to. Oh, it's I'm excited. Yes, that's what I am looking forward to. I know. Anyways, Ross, uh, how you been? Been good. You're late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually ran out of things to talk about, so unless you have something else, unless you have something you want to talk about that you off the top of your head, or Cato. Well, Hi I watched there. the. Hello, I watched the latest Agents of Shield. All right, we talked about Peggy Carter possibly not coming back earlier, but how it was better in general than Agents of Shield. But how I do you... enjoy Agent Carter. It's a really good series, and I like the kind of uh, look at the past. Yeah, both, yeah, but I, uh, to me, both it's... modern culture as well as. The past of the of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To me, it's just a lot better in cinematography and the way it's just fun. I mean, it's just a fun show because they're getting fights every week. 
Agents of Shield just drags you down because now they've got these these uh, some of them have been taken over by this evil thing, and this, that dude will not die. He keeps on coming back from the dead. And, I mean, the advantage. On, just, the advantage that Agent Carter has over Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is Agent Carter is a much more limited series. It's yes. the show they put on when yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. it's 13 episodes. Is... That's what makes it great because it's yeah. 13 episodes. It's like a yeah. Netflix show. It's compact. Exactly. It's condensed, and it tells a story in 13 episodes, and you're done, and it's brilliant. I love those. And that's its big advantage. It's the show they air when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is on its mid-season hiatus. Hiatus. Cause they're gonna hiatus. Take a, a I like that between word. episode 13 and 23. Yes, <laughs> that's why I think it just, uh, Agent Carter is a bit of a better show, and it focuses more on a smaller group of characters. While yes. Agents, their their cast gets a little gets bigger, it's huge, and smaller I mean, it's than bigger now. again. They're getting way out of hand. They got so many people on that show. That's why they had to trim it down. Yeah, people come <laughs> and go, right, but, but the, the story two... so far this season is, yeah, is ahead, really heating the... up. Yeah, I, I didn't see this week's episode, so give us give me a recap. Uh, Kree show up in this episode. Ah, really? the Kree. I have to watch it. Do they come? Yep. Do they? Do they have Big a ship? Guys in do blue. they show or say what? Do they come down in a ship or are they just there? A is, um, a time capsule that was uh or in orbiting in space. Is they, Daisy he... still a bad guy? Yep, and she is further showing that she's not leaving on her own. So this, uh, if they don't break her out of this, and I'm not watching the show for next season because she was part of the reason I liked it. She was one of the characters that I actually liked. If she's going to become evil because I. The thing is with what's his name that 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 the evil dude now who's Grant. been taking over the Grant. Hi. I liked him in the first season. He was fantastic. The the, the shocker after that season is he was the bad guy at the end of that. I was like, wow, that was well, fantastic. Heidi's, that was a great um, twist. But then they yeah, had him throughout the second Hydra. season. Yeah, he went to Hydra. He was part of Hydra, and then he he was bad throughout the whole thing, and he was in and out. And I kind of okay, I kind of I was like, what the hell is the, what the hell, what are they doing? With Grant? I thought they were going to bring him back into the fold. They never did. Now he's the evil guy. If they do the same thing with Daisy, I'm done. I don't think it's going to be the same thing. Day, Daisy and the rest of the Inhumans who have been uh, brought into the Hive, they're all part of a kind of not a shared consciousness, but a shared because they're still individuals. They're not zombies that are being controlled by Hive, but they are being swayed by him. So they have to kill this guy or this thing, whatever it is. I don't know. But uh, it's the, the stakes are definitely heating up with uh, what Hive is planning to do. Now, what is Hive? Is it, like a, is it an inhuman too? Or is it something He was the first Kree? inhuman. Oh, okay. And so, and so how many to... episodes... How many episodes do they have left of that? Um, two three. or three, I think. I'm no, not sure. Same thing with uh, Flash, which is pissing me and, off. And just for the audience that. who doesn't know, Inhumans are basically like they're, they're humans that the Kree experimented on uh, and or mated with or something in the ancient past and sort of planted a new race. Uh, and uh, they're kind of what they're using instead of mutants since Fox still owns the rights. They were that. supposed to be soldiers for the Kree. But right. then they they couldn't control the Inhumans, so they just abandoned them. And then they set up a, a place on the moon originally. Well, in the comics they did. To That's live. a different group of Inhumans, I think. Oh yeah, well this this one led by. But aren't they supposed to have? Aren't they supposed to have like? Uh, again, I just read it. I'm not re- I'm not a re- uh, aficionado of the Inhumans in the comics, but I've heard that don't they have like a leader in the Inhumans, and they haven't introduced him yet into the well, in well the Black Bolt is, of Shield. is the leader of the Inhumans in the comics, the hero Inhumans. Right, they haven't. The groups of Inhumans him. we've seen in Agents of Shield so far were based in a place called Afterlife, and that was run by a woman named Jia Yang, who turned out to be Daisy's mother. Right, I saw and, that. And, I right, her that. father is that hide guy. The guy's used yeah. to hide or whatever. The Inhumans that George is talking about have a city that moves, but is most often on the moon. And their leader is Black Bolt, and he has the ability to practically if he speaks, shatter the world with a whisper. If he speaks, it's better that he doesn't, but if he speaks, it becomes his weapon, his, his voice. Yeah, his, okay, his voice cool. is a source of power. But uh, do you think they're going to be introducing those characters? Well, they they're were supposed, supposed to make to be a movie. movie Maybe movie, he should be a podcaster. It. If he has that power with his voice. The, the, Maybe. It's, there's supposed to be an Inhumans movie sometime got, in Phase 3. But recently it. it's been delayed yes, and possibly pushed back into the next phase to make room for Spider-Man. I heard it was canceled completely. 
That's what it uh, no, 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 no. They they pushed it back. They did not. Oh, sh- right. they, it will come out eventually, just not within the next few years. It looks oh, like okay. it's been either pushed back in the next phase or put on hold until further notice. Yeah, it, it will. They did say it will come out, just not now. They got Vin Diesel for it as Black Bolt, so I've heard. Well, yeah. that's not confirmed, but it's a rumor. He should be a podcaster if his voice can destroy the world. Yep. And he has a wife. Is, is Medusa his wife with the long hair? I think so. That? Yeah. Her hair is her weapon. Yeah, just don't look at her. No, no, no. Not, that's just the name she uses, but her hair is... She can control her hair, so it attacks people. Yeah, just don't look at her. <laughs> no, like, that's a whip it. Is that that yeah, whip it? Yeah, whip it good. Whip it. Dun, 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 oh, that, what's dun. it? Uh, uh, Will Smith's kid who sings that whip it thing with the whip it hair, whip it. What was her name? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Some millennial. Yes, it's a millennial. All right, any other subjects you guys have uh, you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Today is May the 4th, so Ah, may the 4th be with you. I say may the 4th be with you. you. May may the left forwards be with you. No, may the 4th. Be may with the you. Be with you. So does that make tomorrow May the sixth? Oh, or no, that'd be the sixth. May the yes, that would be the May the sixth. The fourth is a Jedi holiday. So I just have to fucking work, right? <laughs> Actually, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see that Wait I have minute. that on there. It's a picture a of the stormtrooper sipping coffee, saying May the fourth is a Jedi holiday. Maybe Some of those us people have to in work. New Zealand who now worship themselves as a Jedi did it so they could get the May the fourth off. You know, Jedi is the the largest Third religion, largest in Louis- the, Louis- the, Louis- yeah, Louis- largest Louis- in the world. Yeah, so <laughs> so I think I'm thinking about joining the Jedi religion. I'll join it you know, every May fourth. I will. I'll join it every I, May fourth. You know, I want to check my midichlorians. I want to start the Sith. The Sith. Um, I'm just. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if uh, um, is gaming of Warhammer sort of a thing with you guys? Do you guys talk about that as well? We can. I used to play Warhammer online, and I used and um, uh, I'm familiar with the game. I'll, Fantasy I'll or forty you... k. Uh, 40k, like the new Dawn of War three trailer. Have you guys? I seen saw it that. I am so excited. I'm familiar with 40k. It, 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 here's I've... something that one of my friends have has noticed during the trailer, and um, he he posted this uh, image of it, rep- perfectly representing the moment. Warhammer 40k for the for, for people who don't know is sort of like taking the D and D and Lord of the Rings and putting it into Star Wars um, technology and magic, and you know, and sci-fi mixed with fantasy. It's pretty cool. John Cena. Pr- pretty much, he he's noticed the resemblance, and this image. Okay, is so just if you haven't perfect. seen the trailer, what the image that Cato shared, uh, the Space Marine that features in the trailer looks almost identical to John Cena. <laughs> pretty much, it is like, I, huh? He, he does. What once you see it, compare the difference, you're like, holy shit, th- this is not right, like. Oh boy! Uh, is John Cena the chap, like you know, the chapter master of the Space Marines, or whatever the uh, Raven Lords are? I don't know. Uh, I don't. The captain, or yeah. Well, now he's chapter master, I guess. Uh, Gabriel Angelos is looks a bit more aged and grizzled than that than that guy. I have an idea for a new se- segment segment we can do on the show every once in a while, where you or Ross. Um bring up a game you want to review you know that could be good and i'd I mean, like to what? talk about 40k uh, i have uh two i have I, I love dawn of war and i've also got uh the tabletop armies it, it, it could be any game because it's mm. super geek so you know gaming is a geek thing so i have a question yeah. mm-hmm. if wonder woman black widow and the scarlet witch got into a fight who would win scarlet witch she can would you say wonder woman is it a pillow? and will? Is it a, wonder is it a... woman Black Widow fight? and Scarlet Witch. No, no, Will. Um, oh, Black Widow could not. It doesn't. It doesn't cater to your fantasies. No, it, they actually got into a fight. Wonder Woman, Black Widow, and Scarlet Woman, Witch. Easy. Who would win? Black Wonder Widow Woman. couldn't beat either one of them. It's impossible. So that's not even a cat. That shouldn't be. Uh, Black one. Widow is a is an assassin. She's doesn't a matter. highly accomplished assassin. She she can't Scarlet beat Witch. Wonder Woman. She can't beat Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, easy. Wonder Woman is almost as powerful as Superman. There's just yep. there's no way. She's I, I'm, I'm going to lean towards Wonder Woman. I, I'm going to have to say that. Wonder Woman. Wonder Scarlet Woman. Witch. 
did away with the mutants. She destroyed all the mutants. She is. She's. Well, she you know, look, it's sort of like it's sort of like voodoo. It only works if you believe in it. No. With a word, the... she nullified the mutants. What did she mutants. say? Be gone. Yeah. Pretty much. No. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone, mutants. Be gone, she can be killed. Wolverine accidentally killed her once. A rogue killer using claws or something. Well, she if be, Wolverine she... killed her, then it tells me that Wonder Woman could kick her butt. Well, no, it's you, you, she can be physically beat up, but you have to catch her off guard. It's like, um, I guess, like I'm gonna Batman. go with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, oh, she's a demigod. Down. She's well, a Woman demigod. Is, out of the three of the one, the three of them in a physical fight, Wonder Woman is no, there's no match between the other two. That she'd beat the crap of them with one hand. But but Scarlet Witch has, as far as her power, if she's ready, she could, she could make them both if vaporize. She's ready. That's the thing. Wonder Woman has the lasso of truth. Okay, she could, she could put the lasso on the Scarlet Witch, and the Scarlet Witch would be like, "I really like you, Wonder Woman, yeah, but I was she... told to kill you because we we're supposed to fight." According to Zack Snyder. Tell the truth, but yeah. Okay, I got one for you. Are you guys familiar with Superpower Beatdown? Yeah, that show, Bat in the Sun thing there. Yeah. They just released their latest video, Optimus Prime versus Iron Man. I and haven't they got a seen Wonder it Woman, yet. They got a Wonder Woman think? versus Wolverine one coming out soon too. I am gonna go with uh, Iron Man. Nope. Against Optimus Prime, really? He loses. Yeah, he loses. Yeah. He's a he's a toy car. Yes, definitely. Iron they go by he's a books. massive sentient robot. Yeah, Iron he's Man a dies. he's a he's a semi truck without uh, a have trailer. Have you seen Iron Man? I've already seen it. One Iron Man dies. I mean, Iron have Man you not is... seen Iron Man? He's got a bunch of suits. He's got like forty. He suits. uses the Hulkbuster suit. And he still loses. Oh, he holds his own against the Hulk. Well, universe. can you post the video so I go watch it, Ross? After yeah, this show, it. <laughs> Optimus Prime. Thing. Thank you. By, by so I could be right. No. Yeah. He killed him a good fight, but no, he they go by when they. I'm make going these with films, Iron Man because Iron Man is actually Man. more intelligent. Yeah, I know, but you're when they make these films, they take a huge consensus of fan votes to and win, and they go by the final. Yeah, results. but fan votes can be wrong. It's sort of like with that American Idol when they kept voting that one dude that couldn't sing. Yeah, you, <laughs> back on the true. show. And yeah. You're right. That is true. There's always a you know, it's bias. Oh, come on, when, look. What, 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 was that, what was that vote? That, that one of those uh, things. In <laughs> yeah, the, him. Things, they they voted for a, 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 the uh, the people to vote for a name of a boat or a ship. Yeah, and I the people that. voted McBody McBoatface is what they wanted to call. The I want to name that. Yeah, <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. Bodie McBoatface. Hey, that's, that's, that's they had to reject it because they couldn't name a boat. Oh, remember, uh, oh. dub the do. When they wanted to name, what, the wanted to yeah, exactly. name that and do. Yeah. So you can't yeah. go by what people Hitler say. Hitler did nothing wrong. Bodie McBoatface. I like that name. It got kept hmm. struck down, though. <laughs> yes, because he wasn't going to name a ship that. No, Bodie McBoatface. This is Bodie McBoatface. SOS, help. We're stuck in the ice. I want to see the one with um, Super Power Beatdown with Wonder Woman versus Wolverine. They did a good one with Superman versus Thor. Then there was an. Oh, Batman versus Darth Vader. That was a good one. I wonder oh, why they're going to name the first ship that goes to Mars with humans. Marzy McMar... Yeah, Marzy McMarface. Marzy McMarface. <laughs> Marky Mark. <laughs> exactly. Marky Mark. Nice. Marky uh, Mark versus... versus uh, Matt Damon. Oh, he's like... Uh, yeah. Shoot. That, that'll be uh, Jason Bourne versus... Who's the guy from the shooter? What did he... What was his name? Oh, I'm having a memory break here. Yeah. But yeah, but Mark Wahlberg in that movie uh, shooter versus Jason Bourne from Jason Bourne or Bourne Supremacy. I'll go, to, I'll go to Jason Bourne on that one. Ooh. That guy's badass. They're, you bo guys... they're both badass films. Oh, sorry if this is off topic of the geeky. No, you're fine. You guys know that they are making a young Han Solo movie, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how much he's going to get paid. Two hundred thousand. He is rumored to appear in Rogue One. Oh, yes, yes, I, really? no, he is. Yeah, that's actually something I've heard too, and it makes sense actually. Vader's him in supposed that. to be in it too. Oh, Vader's definitely in it. He's in the trailer. Well, well he should be in it because it was be yeah. It was I, I, here's trying. what they someone behind the scenes said in an interview. They said they were inspired by that Battlefront uh, trailer where, where Vader walks into the Hoth base throwing his lightsaber to kill people, and they said they said there's a scene. That they that's on the uh, concept art. They don't know if it's going to come out exactly like this. He walks in. First, he throws the lightsaber and decapitates three or four rebels in a row. Then, when the rebels try to return fire on him, the ones that are still alive, he uses the force to put his own stormtroopers in front of him to act as a shield. He's done oh, that in the comics. La 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 la. 
But like you know how. Uh, but why would he one... do that when he actually could stop late? You know the phaser yeah, I mean, fires uh, with his, his hand. What's his game? The, the Probably you know, in the, the cloud least, city. He did. I mean the the the, the Force Awakens. He, Stop that laser bolt with his mind, with his hand. I mean, force. yeah, but I think, it was I just think that... one laser bolt. Well, that's just—he's a kid. He's not even trained. Yeah, I know, but he's Vader also a show off. Thousands of them. I think he's doing it to show off, or just because he can. I think it's one, well, they're, they're putting it in there just because of the fear cool. factor. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't to forget, show. Don't look, forget, I'm Anakin, my own troops. Anakin is still a young type of kid, so to speak. Um, you know, between the episodes four and yeah, three, this is so a few to speak. years before New Hope, he's still he's at his height of mm. being mean and evil, from what they said. Like he is in uh, like, uh, Rebels. Like I'm not sure which comic book is in, but um, I heard that uh, when Darth Vader went on to some other planet and then met the very dark ones, where they were part of the dark side, but at the same time. Oh, uh, the ones who brought back Maul or whatever. Yeah, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. Like, couldn't Darth Vader have, uh, you know, saved the other two Stormtroopers that were being force-choked or something like that? He doesn't care. I know, that's the thing. He didn't care. He, He's like, he this sees is not it. my doing, but I'm not well, going to it. Well, he sees it that if they're, if they're that weak they, to go down, he doesn't want them with him anyways. Pretty much. That's how ruthless and aggressive he is. That's kind of like that. the Randy, Randy Orton to the John Cena. Yeah, well, th- that's how the dark side rolls. If you if you die, you're weak. No, if you're weak, you die. The other way around. Well, yeah, same. All right, you know what I mean. Either way, it still works. Yeah. But um, yeah, this should be interesting. Um, they want to show a more vicious Vader. They 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 want to show stuff they couldn't with the limitations of Lucas not wanting to be too dark. Mm-hmm. I mean, think 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 about it. Like between, I mean, episode five was as much as Darth Vader's action was instead instead of number six. But um, like in the comic books, Darth Vader can actually move around in that bloody. Oh, scene. he, can, in he the, just at, watch Rebels. He, he yeah. Vader is incredible in Rebels. Yeah, in... but like I, I want to see him in a real life movie, at, like a real movie adaptation, moving in that suit. Like I that's know it's what kind of limiting. that's what the that's what the plan is for Rogue One, from what everybody's saying. In that the is. in the comic event Vader Down, Vader faces off against an entire rebel battalion, troops, tanks, and fighters, and emerges unscathed. He's a tough uh, guy. Let's just, you forget let's... that Vader is Darth. He's badass, right? I mean, the dude is basically in tune with the Force. Well, so he's, he's no force, pushover. But like, abilities, yeah, definitely. He, Vader only... is no pushover. Nope. I still think it's possible he could. Well, he is the chosen one, so They've never shown him do it, and, and but maybe they will for once. They've never shown him being able to do the lightning like all the other guys, and they always say in the in the books it's because it's, you have to have more physical than cybernetic to do that. I don't think that section necessarily the case. It's I probably he, just not his style. Well, they didn't introduce Force Lightning until the Revenge of the Return of the Jedi, and the Emperor. That's all he did was his Force Lightning. So you didn't see him as Vader after that. I I still I think. It, he could have known how to do that. He just it just wasn't his first. Well, the force affects people well, in different ways. So I think he just you know. didn't choose no, the use of the force lightning. Either no, no, no. Lucas didn't the come official... up with the idea until Return of the Jedi. The the official reasoning why he cannot use uh for like uh Darth Vader cannot use force lightning is because it messes around with his uh oxygen and you know oh uh, his, met- his, his metric suit. stuff that actually it's, makes it's sense. his suit yeah so he it, can use the he, he's, he, you see he him using the force. Himself. Before. He'd be in danger yeah, himself. he endangers himself every time he uses it. He can he can physically still use it with his one good arm. I think he he still has one. No, arm he's got two cybernetic arms. Nah, okay, so yeah, pretty much he can oh, wait, somewhat. Might, to... Wait a minute, you might be right. Uh, Obi Wan chopped off his legs. He already had one cybernetic arm, unless he mm. lost his other arm as Vader and had it replaced in between the stories, which is possible. Mm. But e- either way, um, he lost I... both his legs and his his remaining arm. The only thing the oh, only yeah, limb he, he had stump. left at the end was his prosthetic arm. Yeah, he was a uh, stump. So, for, so pretty much, uh, yeah, he can't like you know with like if he had his like say one good arm, he probably would have still used force lightning to no repercussions. But because most of him is a stump by now, you know how does force lightning come from the fingertips of a um, metallic hand without you know conducting to the rest of the me- metallic parts? Therefore, yeah. Well, yeah, because that's how he died. The Emperor was lightning was still going. It was back. It was being attracted to his armor from while he was picking him up, and he was getting yeah. sh- he was shocked by it. 
Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, yeah. It, it, he can still use the Force Lightning still, but it's just it he, messes around it with his be, system. It would be almost like um, pull, it would be almost like blowing yourself up if you tried to do mm. it. I, I think he did in one comic book or two comic books. He ha- had to use uh, light, you know, the Lightning Force, but you know, in re- he knew that you know he wouldn't have resorted to such things unless that uh, was you know, in his Legacy. Was... He hasn't done that in any of the new releases. Yeah, pretty much. Because yeah, he, he's just not been training canon. on he's his... Uh, canon, yeah. Yeah. But, he's just been pretty much using his uh, force legend, pushes to sorry, the most legends. effect, yeah. It does make sense, though. that Because, like I said, the Emperor... He picks up the Emperor. The lightning was being zapped around without even being trying to. The, the, it was being drawn to him, like, and he um, he was basically getting fried while he was holding the Emperor. So if Besides, he tried to do it... who what? needs force lightning when you can use force choke? So much more intimidating. Right? I find your yes, lack of faith yes, yes. disturbing. You can choke people out from across interstellar distances. Yeah, that's from the true. surface of a planet to a ship in orbit. That's true. Well, he, he does sense his, like, you know, Luke's presence from the Death Star. Like, you know, when the Death Star was, be- the second one was being created, he could have, he, he knew for a fact that Luke was on that ship. Even well, the Luke Emperor was wanted like, Luke to come to danger- him. Yeah, he wanted him to come because yeah. he wanted to turn him to the dark side. Yeah. It was all a trap for everybody, including Luke. So pretty much Luke fucked up in episode 5. I mean 6, sorry. He fucked yeah. up in episode 6. But let's tone down the cussing a little bit. Uh, he, I, he messed up in, in, in uh, Empire more than, than Return. This isn't Club 602. We're trying not to He's, he's the Barry <laughs> Allen of Star Wars is what he is. He keeps on screwing up. Because we have syndicators and they don't like swearing. Well, that's why the original ending, if it was unaltered, was Luke becoming Darth Vader to, you know, learn from more mistakes and whatnot. And um... actually, in Lucas's original mm. draft, Return of the Jedi, it, if if Luke beat them all, the the dark side and brought balance back, everybody who had become a Force ghost was going to come back to life. Um, that was part oh, of. Oh come the, on! That's the original draft. It's like you because because they forced themselves to go into the Force. They Obi Wan concentrated. He, his body wasn't there because it actually transformed into the force it wasn't like he actually died and yoda did the same thing he closed his eyes and willed himself to into the force as as, as, it is dying physically but it's like a choice it's supposed to be like the thing jesus supposedly did you know like they call it gnosis where you transform to spirit form and then you could transform back afterwards but the people who became force ghosts were supposedly had the ability to come back if the dark side was defeated and um Oh, oh. So how 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 does that make any It doesn't it's not, so? because the people who did the ghost thing ch- concentrated and and made themselves go to the force to the to the except for Qui-Gon. Uh that was the only exception. Uh, well, but Qui-Gon but Yoda, still became Yoda, a force ghost though, didn't he? Well, you, Qui-Gon's the one that taught them all how to do it. If you saw so the, He never manifested, but he was able right. to reach out even he couldn't. Uh, right, even he couldn't. Anakin hurt him at one point. Yeah, and it turned out that the Jedi didn't believe in an afterlife. Um, in the whole season six of Clone Wars, which is canon, Yoda goes on a quest to learn how to become a Force ghost and learn more about the Force. Things that even the Jedi um, just don't know about because there's these aliens they have to teach you. And Qui Gon explains how there's a cosmic Force and a living Force, and uh, it, it ha- you can you can to be able to come back, you have to be uh, learn a certain technique and. Yoda kept thinking he was hallucinating when he was hearing the voices, and he was. And the Jedi Council were skeptical too because they didn't believe that it was possible to come back after death. That they were, they believed that when you're dead, you're just nothing. It was some ancient trick that the, the ancient Jedi orders knew, but it, the records had got lost over the eons, probably from war with the Sith or whatever. Change in beliefs. Mm. But, yeah, um, it, there was a lot of differences and whatnot. Well, we have talked about the, the fault of the Jedi to death in several episodes already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, although I will mention this one uh, prediction I have because we haven't seen Luke in action as far as his teachings of the Jedi. This is why another reason I think he's he's her father is they always had in the in the uh, Yodi in the uh, prequels that you know Jedi aren't supposed to get attached, you know, because it's a weak or it can cause problems and all this other stuff. Mm. All right. Well, I'll see you later. Um. And I believe that, from what I gathered, it's going to be the opposite with Will's version of the... I mean, with Will. <laughs> with Luke's version of the Jedi Order, that he's going to believe that they were wrong because Yoda and Obi-Wan didn't want him to be, uh, to go help his friends because it was an attachment that was going to um, delay his mission. Luke proved that his, his compassion and his attachments actually gave him strength to defeat the dark side. So the belief is that what I'm gathering is that Luke 
his order is going to allow for attachment that he believes that these guys were wrong because according to Lucas the story he based uh, there's a Buddhist legend that Luke's story was based off of where there's a council of monks or whoever and they believe that from ancient times that this is how you do things and then this chosen one comes along and he doesn't agree with them he thinks you got to do it this way and it turned out he was right and that they were all these wise people were wrong so that tells me that when Luke creates his order he doesn't go by the no attachment thing which would explain why he's got Rey as his possible daughter because he allowed himself to get attached to somebody yeah like he's and like, then you know, Ray's died. parents were not in the movie, so well, we anyone shown means. in the movie is not Ray's parents. Well, here's the I thing, don't believe um, that for a minute. Like, JJ said, like, Con's that's what JJ Abrams said. Yeah, it's they the same said, guy who said Con's not in it. Too, and JJ Trek. is such a trusted source, yeah, exactly. He's Con's not in it, it's not Con. Oh, it's Con. You know what's sad is I'm gonna have to wait for Club 602 to say what I think what JJ means and uh, <laughs> his name. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, but uh, it was a good show, and you guys uh, who popped in, um, Ross, Ross, and Cato, well, good, good discussion. So sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Uh, we expected people to possibly pop in, so it's no big deal. Um, Ross, where can find me and Anthony? Have already gone through this route. Ross, where can people find you again on social media? Twitter, Sub Sailor Six Eight Eight. Live, love, play. And Kato, I know you're not really on social media, but what's that Twitch thing you people can find you? So at? yeah, c- catch us on uh, Twitch uh, TV slash Makari Morph, where we do daily giveaways for followers and uh, whatnot. Sounds good. All right, you guys. Well, that was episode 11. It's been a le- wow. February 17th is when we did the first. We're episode. moving up. We're moving up. I was, Facebook, was remi- Facebook reminded me of a post where I, f- February 17th was when we aired the first episode of Super Geek. So it's we're getting awesome. There. All right. Hey, and it's uh, it's I, dang it, I had something for this. What for episode? <laughs> 11, for the for the fact <laughs> that it's episode eleven. Episode eleven, my birthday. Today's so, your birthday, or no. tomorrow? No. Oh oh oh. Something I about the day two, same birthday. double like numbers. It. Take a shot. Oh, Whee. I don't have anything. I don't have any drinks tonight. Which is good. You shouldn't drink while podcasting. I know, right? That's All that's right. for the weekend podcast. Uh, sure. Nothing. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like I'd wait till the weekend. Anyways. All right, you guys. Well, that was episode 11. Uh, thanks for joining me. And we'll talk to you next time.